we had just finished configuring all of our interfaces and we had also verified that all of these interfaces were properly getting their DHCP address from the gateway. But we don't have any firewall zones yet, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, so to do that, we're going to go into network and go to firewall. So these zones are going to be set up a little bit differently than what you might see in some of the other videos. And the reason for that is because we're not really using WAN. Um, and we're not really even using LAN in some cases either. We're not getting our addresses from our router. We're getting it from our gateway. So what that's going to allow us to do is we're going to be able to get pretty strict with these forwardings. And I will show you what I mean in a second. So our first zone, we're going to make our IoT zone. So to select the network, we're going to go to Covered Networks. We're going to select IoT. Um, input. So this would be input that the router receives from the IoT network. And we actually don't want to accept any input. Um, we do want to have output. And we also don't want to have any forwarding either. So forwarding is going to be can this zone talk to other zones inside the network? And we're going to say no, because uh, we don't want our IoT devices talking to anyone else, really. Um, we just want them, you know, just, you know, exfil, exfil your data and just be done with it. We don't want you talking to the router. We don't want anything like that. So under allow forward to destination zones, we don't want any. So we're going to leave this unspecified. And allow forward from zones or allow forward from source zones, we're going to say LAN because we do want to access our IoT devices on our LAN, but we don't necessarily want them to access our LAN devices. So we're going to save this, save and apply. And what you'll notice is once this rule comes into play, if you remember, we had our uh, we had our source forward set to LAN. So now in our LAN zone, we see that LAN is forwarding to WAN and IoT. So we have drop, accept, drop. Um, let's see if our phone is still able to get internet. I'm gonna go to wireless real quick and turn on my phone's Wi-Fi. And we're going to see if we can still successfully browse the internet. All right. So my phone's connected. I'm going to go to, let's read the news. So you saw a spike right there in the rate. The news loaded successfully. Everything's good. But my phone's not going to be able to access my router. And... It's also not going to be able to access other devices on different zones. So this is kind of like, this is the ideal thing. This is like what we want. So we're going to go back here. And unfortunately, this is not going to be too creative. But I actually don't want any of my wireless networks to have access to my router. Uh, even my Wi-Fi network. I'm not using a guest Wi-Fi network because it's kind of, a, it's kind of assumed that anyone that's using my Wi-Fi network is either going to be on an insecure device or they're going to be a guest. Um, I don't have, you know, I, I have a laptop, but I don't use my laptop to do any kind of configurations. So we're going to set this STV zone up pretty much identical to the last zone. Um, I also, so what I'm going to be doing is I set these to drop instead of reject. So if you don't know, there is a common security practice where if you are, if you are declining a packet, so if you're, if you're declining a connection, the attacker will know that there's a device there. But when you drop something, you're not really sure because it's considered like unreachable. I think there's still... 
even with drop, there is still kind of like some hints that you can tell that there might be a device on the other end. But drop is just a little bit better than uh, than reject. So we're going to stick with drop. And we're going to have drop except drop for our input output forward. Um, yep. Save and apply. We're going to do the same thing with our Wi Fi zone. We don't want it to forward to anyone. We do want it to be forwarded from the LAN. Save and apply. And one other thing, while you're selecting these interfaces, uh, these interfaces are going to automatically be shooed into their little, their little zone. So now if we go to interface, we can see that all of our interfaces have changed color to their respective firewall zone. I guess uh, one more thing to note real quick. So because we're getting our addresses from our gateway and not our router, if you did have some kind of rule like this and you were getting your, your addresses from your router and you were getting your, uh, your domain names from your router, you would have to make some rules specific to DNS and DHCP because otherwise your devices are not going to be able to get you know their domain names and they're not going to be able to get their IP address from your router if you select drop on the input like this so in our case we're fine we're totally fine but if you are using your router for DHCP and DNS you're gonna to have to set some rules up um, we are not going to be doing that though because we don't need to um, but for now we're going to change the name of our device and we're also going to set our password now that we're pretty much done with the configuration and we don't have to worry about uh we don't have to worry about you know possibly not being able to get back into our device so we're going to change the host name and we're also going to go to administration and set our password you can do this earlier if you want to um i just i just haven't You know what? We'll, we'll we'll give it a we'll give it a good password. All right. So we have we have our our four interfaces. We've got three VLANs. Um, we've got four wireless networks. Um. I actually let me add in my last wireless network real quick um, this is more of a compatibility network but I like to have this uh, this Wi-Fi 2G 2G non WPA3 network um, I like to have this in here because not all devices can use WPA3 so if you have you know if your friends come over and they are you know they have an older device maybe they don't see the need in having a new one which is totally fine but if you're using a WPA3 only Wi-Fi network like this one for instance if you're using this there's a chance that uh, your friend's device might not be able to connect so that's why I kinda I have this uh, I have this 2G WPA2 network in here too but I think that's gonna be it for this video uh, I'm going to go back to our little diagram real quick to kind of explain what we did. So if you remember this from the first video, we have our switch, we have our physical connection coming in, and we have our physical bridge, our BRLAN. And what we did was we made a virtual connection to our virtual bridge. We tagged all of our VLANs and we created these new VLAN devices. So we had a VLAN 20, VLAN 30, VLAN 60. And once we had those devices tagged and established, we made interfaces for them. 
So we made our IoT interface, our Wi-Fi interface, and our Smart TV interface. And then we connected these interfaces to our various radios. So we had our 2.4 gigahertz BGN radio, and this broadcasted our Smart TV, our IoT, and our Wi-Fi 2G network. And then we had our NAC 5 gigahertz radio broadcasting just our 5G Wi-Fi network. Yep, and that's going to be it. I will start covering the switch next, and then I will move on to PFSense. I hope you guys got a lot out of these configuration videos. Thank you for watching.